Hello, welcome to Coding Box Automation Lab. This is Shurful. In this tutorial, we're going to see 20 most frequently asked uh, API interview questions. Let's go. The first question, what is API? So simply API stands for Application Programming Interface. In the simplest terms of API, it just uh, a structured way of software application to communicate with each other. An API can give you access to the services or data available from another software application. When the application received is, you know, especially formatted request referred to as an API call, or you can say API in call, it responds by providing the requested services or data in the way that can be integrated into other application or workflows. As an example, Google Maps API, you know, it's a YouTube API, Amazon Advertising API, or Twitter API, those are the very famous API example, okay? So I have a separate uh, tutorial in regards API more in details. I will add that link in the description below. Please uh, feel free to watch that one so that you have a better idea in regards to the API, how it works, all those things. Let's move on to the next uh, question. So next question is, what is API testing? Well, in the modern development world, many web applications are designed based on three-tier uh, three architecture model, I would say. So these are number one, presentation tier, which, are, which is, we can say, user interface or UI. Number two is a logical tier, or you can say business logical tier. It is also called, you know, at the business tier. Number three is the data tier. So the data tier, it's a, here is information and data is stored and retrieved from a database. Ideally, these three layers or tier, you can say, should not know anything about the platform, technology, or structure of each other, right? We can use, uh, we can we can test the UI with the GUI uh, testing tools, and we can test logic tier uh, with the API testing tools, right? So logic tier comprises of all the business logic, and it has more, you know, the complexity than the other tiers. And the test executed of this tier is called API testing. Now, API testing, you know, we know this, uh, uh, it's test logic tier directly and checks expected, you know, functionality, reliability, performance, and security. In the agile uh, world, you know, requirements are changing during short release cycles, uh, you know, frequently. That's what we all know. That's the nature of agile world. And the graphics UI, you know, tests are more difficult to maintain according to those changes. So that's, you know, API testing becomes critical to test, you know, application logic. In the GI, you know, I, a GUI testing, we, we send inputs by a keyboard text, button clicks, drop down. That's what, you know, we know that's a way we input some data uh, in GUI testing. On the other hand, in API, you know, we send requests through some methods, right? And get some responses. So these APIs are generally REST APIs or SOAP, which is very famous. We all know, you know, REST or SOAP web services with the JSON or XML, you know, the messages, uh, payloads being sent over HTTP, HTTPS, uh, JMS or MQ protocol, right? So that's the, you know, details you can say the API testing, uh, how it works and and you know the different protocols and the, the the major two types of api testing which is the rest api or sub web services so let's move on our next uh, uh the question the, it is what are the main differences between api and web services so here is a few you know a high you know high level differences we can explain you can say the all API services, uh, sorry, all web services are APIs, but not all APIs are web services. 
Number two, all web services need to be exposed over web or we can say HTTP, but all APIs need not, you know, uh, need not to be exported over the web. Web services might not, you know, contain all the specification and cannot perform all the tasks that API, APIs would perform. The next difference, uh, it's a, a web service uses only three, you know, styles of use like SOAP, REST, and XML RPS, RPC, you know, for communications, uh, whereas API may be exposed uh, to in multiple ways. Example, DD, DDL files in C, C++, JAR files uh, in Java, uh, interrupts in uh, uh, Linux, you know, uh, the kernel API, etc. So, and a web service, the last difference, uh, it's a, a web service always needs needs a network to operate, while APIs does not need a network for operation. Okay, so th those are the, the very high level, some differences, but there is a lot more some differences, you know, so, but in the interview, if you say, you know, just to mention the, this, this number of uh, differences, you'll be fine. Let's uh, next move to our uh, next question is, what are some architectural styles for creating a web API? So here is a, you know, the four common web uh, API architectural st styles would be, number one is HTTP for client server communication. Number two is XML or JSON as formatted language. Number three is simple URI as the address for the services. We'll see more details about the URI in our upcoming few other questions. So I will explain you what is the URI, but uh, probably you already know about it. So, so next one is, you know, stateless communication. So this is the, you know, the four architectural style are very common for web API. Next move on to our next uh, question is, what are the advantages of API testing? Well, there is a, you know, few advantages I'm going to, uh, you know, you can put on your, on your answer, which is like test of core functionality. So API testing provides access to the application without a user interface, uh, right? And that the core and uh, core level of functionalities of the application will be tested and evaluated early before the GUI test. This will help detect the minor issues, of, which can become bigger during the GUI testing. The next advantage is it's time effective. Means, you know, API testing usually is less time consuming than functional GUI testing. The web elements in the GUI testing must be pulled, you know, which makes the testing process slower. That's what we all know, right? If you do some even automation, you know, uh, you have to detect some of the web elements. So to detecting web element, you know, it takes, it's it's slow, it makes slower the process. On the other hand, API test, uh, you know, automation requires less code, so it can provide better and faster test coverage compared to GUI test. Uh, so this will, you know, result in the cost saving for the testing project. So that's a really, uh, you know, very effective advantages for using API testing. So next one, next advantages, so we can say a language independent. So it means in API testing, data is exchanged using XML or JSON file, or even you can use text file. These transfer modes are completely language independent allowing user to select any code language when adapting automation testing services for the project. So next benefits, uh, we can say easy integration with the GUI. It means API test enable highly inter, you know, integrable test, which is particularly useful if you want to perform functional GUI test after API testing. For instance, you know, simple integration would allow new user account to be created with the application before a GUI test started. So 
those are the very you know you can say the main core advantages for ap testing you can add more you know but for during interview that should be sufficient your answer let's uh, move on our next question is um, you know what are the common protocols used in api testing you know if you're familiar with api testing definitely you already know it you know so the, the main common per, uh, you know the, uh, the protocol used in api such as jms or rest http uddi and soap those are the you know the main protocols that are used in api testing which is very straightforward let's uh the next question would be what are the common api testing type you know there is a lots of you know uh api testing types but i'm going to you know highlight a few of them like very famous uh example you know the validation testing functional testing load testing runtime or error detection security testing penetration testing and first testing but there is a lot more okay let's move on the next uh, question so question uh, the question is what are the tools can be used for api testing types you know nowadays there's a tons of tools you will find to do api testing here is a number of you know few number are uh, are, are very famous uh, for api testing like postman catalon soap ui tricentris uh, tosca jmeter jmeter you can integrate with api testing for performance so that's why you can add jmeter rest assured api uh fortress high pitch uh, swagger soap sonar api signs and parasoft but there is a lot more tools you can add there is you will see this industry there's a tons of tools available nowadays because api is a very famous testing uh, nowadays let's move on the next question is uh what are the major challenges faced in api testing so, okay so we're going to you can you know summarize your answer with the very common challenges in api testing example you know the parameter selection you know so if you're familiar with uh, any api tools say example postman you will see or any other automation tools so for api testing you'll see parameter selection it's uh, it's one of the common challenges parameter combination uh, call sequencing output verification and validation and also the lastly you can say the providing input values is very difficult as uh, GUI is not available in this case because in API you don't see any you know graphics user interface you, uh, you know to enter to input your 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 values so it is a little bit you know difficult things like without seeing the ui you know, you have to input uh, uh you know your testing values so those are the very common challenges you can see in your answer let's go to the next question so next question is what are the testing methods that come under api testing well you know uh, here is a number of testing method uh you know i you can put on your answer like unit testing into end integration testing functional testing load testing to test the performance under load that's why jmeter it comes to the picture you can integrate the jmeter with api testing for to do your load testing usability and reliability testing to get consistent result security and pen, pen penetration testing to validate all types of authentication automation testing to create and run a script that require regular api calls okay so those are the you know the the common uh, testing methods that comes under the api testing let's uh, go to the next question so the question is what is api documentation so the api documentation is a complete you know accurate technical writing giving instruction on how to effectively use and integrate with an api it is a you know compact reference manual that has all the information needed to work with the api and helps you answer all the api testing questions with the details on functions you know classes 
your return type argument and also examples and some tutorials so it is very very significant uh you know you can say larger document that give you all the answer that you need for your testing okay so when you need to do any api testing you know you will ask that document you know to the from the developer you can get that uh document from the developer okay so next question it's what is a restful web services so there are you know two kinds of web services uh, you can uh, you can remember in, in regards to restful so one is soap as we know you know which is a simple object access protocol soap is an xml based method to expose web services and another one is the rest which is the in the representational state transfer it's a very famous uh you know uh so web services and uh, rest is an architectural style for developing web services over http protocol and uses http method to define action you know it's a uh, the http method those method like you know get get put post all those things right delete so it revolves around resources where every component being a resource that can be accessed you know access through a shared interface using standard http method so by using for for this soap or rest you know web services developed in the rest style are referred to as a restful web services these web services use http method as we all know to implement the concept of rest architecture a restful web services usually defines a uri which is means an uniform resource identifier a service provides resource you know representation like json or xml or text file and set of http method okay so that will be the more than enough on your answer if you just explain this to you in a soap and rest and a little bit more information some of that you know the http and http method in regards to the restful web services let's see the next question so what is resource in rest so in the rest architecture creates any contain as a resource so anything uh any contain anything in rest is is treated it's called a resource which can be either text files is html pages image videos json file in the dynamic business information anything anything it's a resource rest service in a, you know so rest server gives access to resource and modifies them where each resource is ident identified by uris or global ids okay let's see the next question this is a question number i think 15 so the question is what are the core components of an http request well an http request you know uh, contains five key elements number one an action sh showing http method like get put post delete you know uh, uh, the next one would be uniform resource identifier which is the uri which is you know uh, it's a resource or uh, resource on the server the next one would be http version which indicates http version for example http you know version 1.1 or version 2.5 and so on and the uh, next one is a request header which carries metadata as a key value pairs right for the http request masses metadata could be a client like a browser type format supported by the client format of a message body format you know format cache settings and so on the request body which indicates the masses in a content or resource representation so those are the you know the core component of an http request if you use any tools like you know the postman you'll be able to discover those things right so let's move on the next question the question number 16 is what is the uri 
so we have seen in our previous couple of questions answer we involved we said uri so what is the uri what is the main purpose of rest based web services and what is its format so uri stands from uniform resource identifier it is a string of characters designed for unambiguous identification of resources and extensibility by the uri schema the purpose of a uri is to locate a resources on the server hosting of the web service here is a uri format you can see you know your protocol which is maybe http then service name you know ex uh, example dot com then resource type maybe uh, employee and then resource id say specific any employee id say 100 so that would be you know a format of the uri so you started with the protocol then specific domain name then a specific resource type say employee and then a specific you know even a specific employee out of the employee type right so that's the format of the uri you know usually you can find okay let's uh, move on the next question what is payload in the restful web services so that the payload is the data you are you know interested in transporting this is you know uh, this is differentiated from the things that wrap the data from transport like HTTP or HTTPS request response header authentication and so on okay so let's see what's our next uh, question number 18 it's what is the rest assured it's a very very famous question simply you can say rest assured is a java library used for testing and validating the restful web services it supports behavior driven development or bdd in a syntax like a given when then uh, notation it helps us to integrate with the testing frameworks like j we unit or test in g okay let's see uh the question number 19 it's how to test rest api in order to test rest apis we have you know the rest assured library we all know it's developed by by j way by the way you know con uh, the company and it's it's it is a you know really powerful catalyzer for automated testing of rest services rest assured provides a lot of nice features such as uh, dsl like syntax xpath validation specification reuse easy file uploads and with those features will handle automated api testing much easier the next point would be the rest assured has a gorking type syntax which is that we all know bdd you know syntax and also you can get you know json response as a string and send it to the json path class and use it methods to write more structured test okay so that's the way you know you can say uh you know you can test rest api the the next or final question is soap or rest apis which method to use you know this is a little bit details you have to uh, give the answer so you have to say you know so first you know you have to say like in regards soup you know soap you know uh the advantages or disadvantages over the rest and then you have to give another answer you know advantages or disadvantages advantage of the rest over the soap so let's see this what is you know uh, some uh, advantages or disadvantages so over the rest the soap is uh, very easy to implement and i'm sorry soap is not a very easy to implement and requires more bandwidth and resources so you know soap masses request is processed slower as compared to rest and it does not use a web caching mechanism ws security so what is ws security so ws security it's like webs it's called 
Web Services Security. It is a specification that defines how security, you know, the measures are implemented in a web services uh, to, uh, to protect them from external attack. It is a set of protocol that ensure security for sub based messages by implementing the, you know, the, 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 there was some principle of uh, confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. So WS, you know, security, we can say, while SOAP support SSL, you know, it also support WS security, which adds some enterprise security features. The next point is uh, WS uh, automatic, you know, transaction. So the need SCID transaction over a service you are going to need in a SOAP. So what is SCID in fact? So SCID transaction, you can say it is a set of, you know, uh, four key properties that identifies a transaction which are uh, autonomy city, consistency, reliability, and durability. If a database, you know, operate those uh, ACID properties, it can be called an ACID transaction. Okay, so if you back to here our point, so ACID transactions over a service, you are going to need, you know, uh, going to need a SOAP. Okay, and the next question you will, you can say WS reliable messaging. If your application needs a asynchronous in you know, a processing and a guaranteed level of reliability and security, REST does not have a standard messaging system and expects clients to deal with communication you know failures by retrying. So this is you know the disadvantages of REST. So next point you can say if the security is a major concern and the resources are not limited then we should use soap web services like if we are you know creating a web service for you know the payment gateways financial and uh, telecom telecommunication related work then we should go with soap as a you know higher security compared to rest okay so those are the you know few points you can explain the benefits of SOAP and there is a disadvantages for you know uh, using REST and then let's see what would be the uh, you know some advantages also from the REST over to SOAP so you know REST is it's it's easier to use uh, for the most part and it's more flexible so since you know REST is uses a standard HTTP, it is much simpler compared to, you know, uh, uh, so REST is easier to implement and requires less bandwidth and resources. It means, you know, it is faster. REST permits many different data formats, whereas the SOAP only permit XML. So, so we all know the REST permit like, you know, the JSON, uh, you know, XML, uh, even the text format right compared to soap soap only permit xml format and the rest allows better support for browser clients due to its support for json rest has a better performance and scal scalability rest reads can be cache soap based reads cannot be cache so it means the in it, it, you know, rest it's a better performance because it can read the data from the cache. <clears throat> if security is not a major concern, we have limited resource and we have a limited resource, or we want to create an API that will be easily used by other developer, you know, publicly, then we should go for REST. But if it's a, you know, a concern about the security, especially for financial institutions, uh, you know, then definitely so would be the better choice even though slower performance then if we need in a stateless crude crud crude operation then go with the rest so what is crude i am pretty sure we all know you know 
the CRUD stands for create, read, update, and delete, which are the four major functions for uh, interacting with the database application. CRUD functions uh, you know, play a very important role in a web-based REST APIs where they map to the HTTP methods like get, post, delete, put, and patch. So next point, you can say REST is commonly used in social media, web chat, mobile services, and public APIs like Google Maps. RESTful service re, you know, returns various media type for the same resources, depending on the request, you know, header parameter, except as application or XML, or, uh, you know, the JSON for post and, and the user, you know, json or get user you can say this is example 123.xml for get so next uh question you can say the rest services are meant to be called by the client side application not the end user directly so you know those are the very you know important points that you can say uh, include in your answer when there is a comparison between SOAP and REST APIs method. Okay, that should be more than enough, you know, to overcome or crack your interview. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's the very, you know, the 20 number questions that's asked frequently during the interview. However, there's a number of questions. I have more questions in our websites in Coding Box Automation Lab. Over here, I will add this link to the description below. So feel free to go there and see, you know, a few more questions and an answer. You can find the answer, all the questions like over here. And then if you go there, you can find the answer. So this is a, as a document you can use, you know, for your reference for moving forward. So, okay. So that's all for, for, for today in regards to the AP interview questions. Feel free to add any other questions that you feel is very important or it was asked during the interview. You know, put in a comment so that you know uh, uh, we can have a discussion what was the answer what should be the answer uh, uh, or what was your answer okay so and and share the knowledge with others thanks a lot have a good one bye bye